Hi everyone, welcome to Mind Blend. Have you ever wondered if you're being told the whole truth? Today we're peeling back the curtain on a touchy subject, the common lies told by women. Now let's be clear, this isn't about pointing fingers or setting blame. Instead, we're here to uncover these fibs to foster better understanding and improve communication in our relationships. It's all about transparency and honesty. Before we dive into these intriguing truths, please subscribe to our channel and give this video a like if you're curious to learn more. First on our list, I'm fine. This seemingly simple phrase is often anything but straightforward. When someone says they're fine, it might actually be a mask for a multitude of unspoken feelings. It's a classic example of emotional shorthand. Why do people use it? Often, it's to avoid burdening others with their troubles or to sidestep a potential conflict. Think about it. How many times have you answered I'm fine just to keep a conversation light even when you were anything but? It's a social reflex, a barrier we put up when we're not ready to discuss what's really going on inside. But here's a thought. What if we took a moment to look beyond these words? Encourage a culture where it's okay to share the not-so-fine moments. The next time someone tells you they're fine, consider it an invitation to offer a listening ear. It might just be the opening they need to truly express themselves. So, next time someone tells you they're fine, maybe dig a little deeper. Next up, nothing's wrong. How often have we heard this phrase only to discover layers of unspoken words hiding behind it? When someone says nothing's wrong, it's rarely a declaration of serene peace. More often, it's a complex cocktail of emotions, perhaps a mix of not wanting to burden others, a fear of confrontation, or simply the hope that the issue will resolve itself. This phrase acts as a silent alarm. It's a cue that invites us to probe deeper, to offer a listening ear or, or a comforting presence. Ignoring these signs can lead to misunderstandings or resentment, as what is left unsaid might fester into something larger and more damaging. The art of communication is not just about speaking, but also about listening and understanding the silences. Nothing's wrong could very well mean I'm not ready to talk, but it's a start. An invitation to a dialogue that respects timing and emotional space. Remember, acknowledging there's something wrong is the first step to making it right. Scene script. Ever heard I'll be ready in five minutes? If you have, then you might know that this phrase could easily be the most flexible five minutes in the history of timekeeping. This common expression isn't just about the words spoken. It's a fascinating glimpse into the clash between expectation and reality when it comes to preparation. When someone says they'll be ready in five minutes, what they're often really saying is that they need just a bit more time. It's a buffer, a brief extension to perfect that winged eyeliner to find the right shoes or maybe to take a few deep breaths before heading out the door. The pressure to be punctual battles with the reality that good preparation takes time. And let's be honest, who hasn't underestimated the time it takes to get ready? Whether it's choosing an outfit, fixing a hairdo, or gathering necessities for the day, these tasks often take longer than planned. So the next time you hear, I'll be ready in five minutes, remember, patience is key when five minutes is on the clock. Moving on to, I don't know where it is. This phrase, often tossed casually over a shoulder or called out from another room, might seem innocent enough at first, but let's delve a bit deeper into what's really going on here. Sometimes when someone says they don't know where something is, it might simply mean they haven't actually looked for it yet. It's not so much about the missing item, but more about the indirect request for help. Think about it as a subtle nudge, a kind of silent beacon, signaling, hey, could you help me out here? Other times, it could be a diplomatic way to enlist help without directly asking for it. It's about seeking assistance, yes, but it's also about wanting to share a small, perhaps mundane, but jointly undertaken activity. It's less about the missing keys and more about the company and collaboration in the search. Teamwork in finding lost items can sometimes reveal more than just the missing object. What about I haven't done anything to my hair? You've probably heard it tossed around during casual meetups or perhaps before a night out. It's a phrase that might seem simple, but there's often more twirling beneath those tresses than meets the eye. Let's unravel this. Often, the effort to look effortlessly chic is anything but effortless. Many spend considerable time and energy on their hair to achieve that I woke up like this look. From deep conditioning treatments to subtle highlights, the journey to natural-looking hair can be quite intricate. Why the understatement, though? Well, in a world that constantly promotes flawless beauty as a casual norm, 
Admitting to hard work can sometimes feel like revealing a magician's secret. It's not just about appearing effortlessly attractive, it's also about crafting an image of ease and confidence. So next time someone says they haven't done anything to their hair, take a moment to appreciate the artistry. Effort and beauty can be a form of art worth acknowledging. Ever get a bargain? It was on sale might not always mean a great deal was had. This phrase has almost become a shopping mantra, whispered like a magic spell that justifies all sorts of purchases. From a third pair of sneakers to that fancy espresso machine that's now collecting dust on the counter. When uttered, this phrase can sometimes be less about the deal and more about easing the guilt of impulse buying. Let's delve into the psychology here. Saying something was on sale can make the purchase feel more justified, regardless of whether it was needed. It transforms an ordinary buying decision into a savvy financial move, at least that's the hope. But what's really happening? Often it's a clever play of consumer psychology where the thrill of getting a bargain overshadows the practicality of the purchase. So, next time you hear it was on sale, take a moment to consider, was it really a necessity or just a clever excuse to splurge? Sometimes the deal is in the eye of the beholder. Here's a classic. I don't want anything for my birthday. How many times have you heard that one? It's almost like a coded message waiting to be deciphered. When someone says they don't want anything, it might just be their way of taking the pressure off the decision-making process, but don't be fooled, it's rarely as simple as it sounds. Deep down, it's often a test. They might be looking to see if you can come up with something thoughtful and surprising on your own. It's not about the price tag or the grandeur of the gift, but the thought and effort you put into it. Remembering their favorite author or booking a table at a restaurant they mentioned in passing, these gestures show that you've been paying attention. And let's be honest, who doesn't like a good surprise, especially on their birthday? It's about making them feel valued and loved without them having to spell it out. Gift giving isn't just about the material, but about showing you care. How about, we can go anywhere you want? Have you heard this before? While it seems like an open invitation, often it's not as straightforward as it sounds. This phrase, commonly uttered in the context of choosing a restaurant or a holiday destination, might actually be a subtle test of your decision-making skills and your understanding of the other person's preferences. Imagine planning an evening out. When someone says, we can go anywhere you want, what they often mean is, I want you to take the lead, but please keep my likes and dislikes in mind. It's not just about geographical flexibility, it's about attentiveness and consideration. They might have a specific place in mind, but are nudging you to make the choice, hoping it aligns with their unspoken wish. This dynamic can turn the simplest decision into a complex puzzle. It's not just about picking a place, it's about understanding and valuing the other's preferences without them having to spell it out. Decisions are best made together, don't you think? And what about, I only have a couple of bags? Ah, uh, this phrase, often heard echoing from packed shopping aisles to cluttered hallways, carries a charm all its own. Picture this, a serene afternoon of shopping, a peaceful promise of minimalism, until the trunk of the car groans open to reveal a small mountain of shopping bags. It seems a couple can be a rather elastic term, stretching to fit just one more irresistible sale item. Or consider the world of travel. The phrase transforms into a hopeful understatement as the suitcase bulges, zippers straining like the smile of someone trying to convince themselves they've packed light. The reality? Well, let's just say it often involves sitting on the suitcase to coax it shut. A silent prayer whispered against the laws of physics. Yet there's an endearing optimism to claiming just a couple of bags. It's a mix of wishful thinking and a subtle test of our own packing prowess. In the end, a couple can sometimes mean just a few more. Wow, we've covered quite the ground with these common untruths. From the harmless I'm fine to the strategic it was on sale, we've explored a myriad of ways that communication can be more colorful than factual. Remember, understanding these fibs is less about fault-finding and more about fostering deeper connections and empathy. If you enjoyed uncovering these everyday fibs with us, don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video with your friends. Thank you for watching and see you next time on MindBlend.